All right, so I'm making an add-on for importing animated clothes that are looped into Blender so that you don't have to make a lot of simulation because that's too much work. And uh, I ran into a problem because uh, I make most of the clothes in an A pose, but uh, sometimes your characters are going to be rigged in the T pose as the rest position. And in fact, all Mixamo characters come in with a T pose instead of an A pose, uh, which could be problematic. And uh, if I made the clothes in a T pose, then you might find yourself with a character in an A pose. Uh, so this video is just to show you how to use assets in an A pose with a T pose or vice versa. So if I wanted to rig this, I can't just uh, use control P with automatic weights because then uh, the hands are going to be, you can see how they're pushed in uh, because uh, the rest position of uh, the original uh, rig was an A pose and uh, it is getting mapped, uh, the character or the cloth is getting mapped to a T pose. Let me get uh, this jumper because it already has, it has wind uh, to it. And should I get the long one or let me just get this here, import that. Yeah, so if I wanted to use this animated character, uh, you, you can just come in and edit uh, this rig. Uh, that will also come with its issues. You can see how now this hand has been moved. Uh, it's, it's, it's not ideal to do that either. So here's a way to do it. So let me go to frame 30 and uh, frame 28. I can clear and clear everything and uh, K insert available. Uh, so that we have, we start with a, a few uh, keyframes with a T pose and then we go back to uh, the animation just like that. So I'm just using this to, to make the mapping easier for me. So to make this map to this, is, is it just duplicate the original? So I'll just, let me actually just move this to the side and you can delete all the keyframes and, and now I can even just bring my character. Let me make sure that they are positioned correctly like that. Okay, so now all I have to do is edit this uh, for some reason, the mirror tool doesn't work very well, uh, but uh, it would have been useful. So I'm just going to rotate this or edit this pose or this rig into the A pose. So I'm just going to add uh, the 3D cursor here and uh, select these bones here and use uh, the pivot point, change the pivot point to 3D cursor and just rotate this until I'm satisfied with the positioning. You can also go to uh, the display and change the viewport to in front so that the amateur is always in front of uh, the. Just make sure that everything lines up. Uh, for this, I don't have to be too perfect because uh, it's cloth, but uh, you can be as perfect as you want. Now I have that, so I can just use Ctrl P with automatic weights. And now if I move this, you can see that uh, this is rigged correctly. This is basically working as expected. Although we have some issues with uh, bone weighting, uh, we don't need these bones to be attached here. And uh, in fact, uh, to make my life easier, uh, because this is just a jacket, I don't need the fingers, even this lower body, I can just delete it to be more efficient. So I can go back to clear rotation and clear out G and out R and do the automatic weighting again, Ctrl P, automatic weight and yeah, that's much better. We still have an issue here, uh, but uh, that can be fixed quite easily. Now, what I want to do is uh, uh, try to match the, the animation of this. Now, that is very, very easy. All you have to do is go to the constraints here and start adding copy constraints. Uh, so uh, I know the bonds I touched or the bonds I moved was, I think was this and this. I don't know if I did change this, but uh, yeah, we, we can add a copy constraints if we want uh, for that. So I'm going to come to this and we can use a copy rotation constraint. I want to copy the rotation of this bone. So I first have to target the armature and then the bone are good enough because this, this is the same skeleton as this. It's basically a copy of the other one. The naming is still going to be the same. So this is left arm. Uh, so I, all I need to do is copy the left arm as well. So I'll just search for left arm here. And we have that. I now have to do it on this side. Um, and we have a T pose. If we play back, you can see we get exactly what we want. I still want the original animations. Select this and then select the original. Control L, link animation data. And uh, that should give me the same animation as I want. And uh, now I can bring this back to 
the position and you, see, you can see we have the character rigged and ready to move so okay so that's it that's how you map an a pose to a t pose and yeah if you want to check out the add-on is still in beta and uh, available to only my patrons so links are in the description feeling inspired and want to level up your blender skills especially in geometry nodes vfx and motion graphics here are some courses that'll help you get there the master geometry nodes course shows you how to build procedural systems from scratch the Blender Advanced Effects course dives into motion graphics and high-end VFX entirely inside Blender. And the Houdini for Blender Artists course bridges Blender's workflow with Houdini's procedural power. Together, they teach you how to think like a technical artist, love that, giving you total control over your creative pipeline. So whether you're picking up add-ons, mastering procedural tools, or learning full production techniques, there's never been a better time to level up. Blender's ecosystem is evolving fast. And if you're keeping up, you're already ahead of the game.